So a ton of people have been asking me for a tutorial video on how I use simple commands to make videos like this one. I'm going to try to explain to the best of my ability how you could use uh, relatively simple commands to make parkour, uh, mob spawn, and just basically how to alter the world around you like in most of my TikTok posts. I'm going to be using this loop as an example since it has a little bit of uh, automated slime parkour, some creepers, and a closing wall animation at the end. Okay, so the first thing that happens in this loop is the grass breaks out and then the slime catches me below. And that is all done by one single command block right here with a test4 command in it. So what this command does is test for a player, which is at p, which says right here, all uh, nearest player. And the r equals 2 it means that it's constantly testing for a player within two blocks of this command block. So I'll explain that right here. So the same command here, this time we have r equaling 3. So any any player within three block radius of this command block, including the one it's below, so one, two, three, will get tested for. So if I put a comparator here and a redstone repeater connected to two command blocks, that's going to spawn diamond ore and air. If I step within this boundary, whenever this command is turned on, it's going to test for me. Whenever it's turned off, it's no longer going to do that. So that's just what's happening in this command right here. And I have a redstone block keeping it on, and this one's only for two blocks, so the second I step above this, it'll activate the commands. So the most basic command that I use for parkour type things is the slash set block in the slash fill command. So the set block command is really basic, it is just slash set block and then a list of coordinates where you want a block placed. So if I do slash set block stone where this gold block is, it's going to place a stone block. And the only other thing you could do with this command is add data values to the end of it. So stone 1 is going to be a different type of stone. And these are just numbers that you have to look up for uh, specific blocks. But if you just want a normal block, you typically just do like gold block 0. Now the fill command is a little bit different because it has three more sets of coordinates. So if I do slash fill and take these coordinates from this gold block and then finish it with these coordinates from this gold block. And then let's say I just want to fill this with diamond blocks. I hit enter and this will fill in blocks. So this can always do more than one block and the set block command is always just one block which is what I used right here. So this line being placed is a set block command and then these four being placed is a fill command. So this beginning part's much easier to explain now because once I run past this command block that turns on by that uh, test for command, you can see the grass break breaks out in these specific areas. So that's just commands from this corner to this corner, a fill command from here to here, and another one right in that corner. And that's just all laid out in these commands down here as air zero destroyed. And that little particle effect is after you type zero, it's destroy, and then air is obviously just deleting the blocks. And I have just a few of these, so that way it's not a perfect square being broken out. So one of the second most useful things about command blocks, especially in Bedrock Edition, is the delay and ticks option inside the command block. So what this helps me do is uh, delay when the command is going to activate itself to whenever I'm going to be around the block that I'm either jumping on or landing on or just anything that I want altered around the world can be timed with the command block. So this first command here is going to set a block at these coordinates, which is down in the ravine, and it's going to place a slime block. And I didn't do a data value or an action because all I need is slime to be uh, placed there. Delaying ticks down here is set to 35. Every 20 ticks is one second. So basically whenever you're trying to time something, you put the command in, do a number that you think is going to work, and then test it. So let's say I thought this was going to happen 20 ticks after I activate the command. I test it by running here. I can see that the slime got placed, but it was there a little bit early. I want this to look a little more risky, so I'll go back to the command. Maybe I think 40 is a good time for it, and then it breaks at 45. So I'm going to run off here. And as you can see, I hit the ground and it didn't spawn fast enough. So it just takes a little bit of testing. But all you got to do is keep changing those numbers to get it either faster or slower. So I found out that 35 matches is pretty good. And then the command right after is the same coordinates, 428, 33, 20, 212. You can see here the same coordinates. But in this one, I have air, zero, destroy. And this is going to break the block. And I have this at 45 ticks, which is going to be after it spawns at 35. And uh, you've already seen what it looks like, but I'll just show it again. I run past here, it'll spawn at the right time, and then it'll break itself right after. 
So you can basically do the same thing with some uh, basic parkour here. I have four fill commands, three of which are used to place the three columns here, which is this command here, the slash fill, and I took the coordinates of each pillar and used diamond block. This one spawns right when I get at, uh, within the block radius of the command block. This one's set to 10 ticks after, and then this one's set to 20, so that's uh, 0, 10, 20 ticks. And usually 10 tick apart is uh, good for parkour like this. And this last command here is a fill air command, and this is going to replace only diamond blocks within that radius, as you can see. This gold block here, whenever I run this, is not going to get deleted, so only diamond blocks are going to get replaced. Another command that I use a lot is the summon command, and that's used right here with all the creepers spawning. The summon command lets you spawn any sort of mob at any uh, coordinates that you would like. So to get multiple mobs to spawn at once for a short period of time, I like to take a command block, make it a repeating command block, and put the summon command inside. Then you place a block next to that, take the coordinates of those blocks, and type it into a set block command, and do air. So that'll delete the block, place the command block next to the other block you just placed, enter that command in there, and then however long you want the mobs to be spawning is how long you put the delay in ticks here. I usually do 60 ticks, which is 3 seconds. And then you want to take the same command that you just put in there, and instead of doing air, put it in another source. I have it connected to my test4 command block, and do redstone block. So what this is going to do, once I walk into this test4 area, it's going to activate this command. It's going to put a redstone block right here, turning on this command which will spawn the creepers and then this will eventually turn it off by turning this back into air after three seconds so that's what this looks like spawn a bunch of creepers and then it stops after 60 ticks so if I wanted less creepers I could keep this command maybe on 20 ticks and I go in this area, so that only stays for about a second, and that's how many creepers spawn. So this part just uses the fill command over and over again with a little bit of delay to make it look like the walls are closing in on me. Even though it looks complicated, all I did was take the coordinate there and there and used a fill command named it stone uh, 6, I believe is this polished block. And then I took this coordinate, and this coordinate is one fill command named it stone 6 polished block, and 6 is just the data value to get that specific block. And then I put those in the command blocks here, which I just activated with the pressure plate. And I had them activate at the same time. So this one goes off at 66 ticks, which is the right wall. And this one also goes off at 66 ticks, with, which is the left wall. And then I also have the rest of the walls closing at the same time. So this is at 76. This one will also be at 76 until it just gets to the point where it's, uh, it looks like it's almost closed on me completely. And finally, I just took this corner and then went all the way to this corner and put that in the fill command and I used air as the last block. So what that's going to do is after I run through it, it will clear out the room. Keep in mind whatever command you choose to use to clear out a room, give it a pretty high delay in ticks. So this one's going to happen 250 ticks after everything happens. That just makes sure that the, uh, the room is not going to reset itself as you uh, are running through it. So if I needed this room to reset any slower, I can make that number a lot bigger. But 250 is a long time, so I run through the whole thing and stop. And it's going to take 250 ticks for this room to clear out. But by the time I'm done running through here and up at this part, that'll already be done. So. It won't be in the video. I think that just about does it for this video. I really just wanted to cover the basic commands I use a lot and show uh, how to time them correctly. I hope this wasn't too too complicated and that you guys could start uh, using this to make your own command block setups. It really just takes a lot of practice and if you need further explanations as to how certain commands work feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer to the best of my ability. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.